In this presentation, we are going to look at statistics with R. This is a correlation analysis exercise. A manufacturer of luxury cosmetics has made a new product and put it on the market. This product is being initially offered at a wide range of prices and the company has made a survey of the sales. So we're going to call that Y and in units of hundreds and prices X in units of pounds. That's the British pound sign. Uh, across a random sample of stores in which it is sold. It wishes to examine whether or not, on the whole, increased prices is associated with reduced sales. And the results are shown in the following table. So we have 10 stores there, 1 to 10, okay? We have the prices there, X, and I'm just going to call that price, but it's the X variable from now on. 27, 37... 20, 27, 30, 37, 47, 55, all the way up to 99. So, gee, that's a big difference. Wow. And sales. So, 110 were in store one. So, that's uh, 11,000, essentially. Down to 3,000 and store 10, where it is sold for 99. Okay. So, the first question is, draw the data on a scatter Diagram and comment on the relationship, if any, between X and Y, sales and price. Okay, so I'm going to just set these two variables up the here in R. I'm going to set up price. I'm just going to call it price and sales, with X and Y. And I'm going to combine them into a single data set called survey. Okay, this is a data frame. And let's just check, do we have what we have, what we expect to have. So we have the price variable there and the sales variable there. Excellent, okay. That's the first six rows of this data frame, just to check everything looks like it's in order. Okay, so we can move on. We have the data set up. What I'm gonna do is actually uh, create a scatter plot. I'm gonna use ggplot for this. This is a well-known R package for coming up with graphics. So essentially what we want is we want to create a ggplot object. So we specify the data set where the data frame we're using. It's called the data frame I just created previously. That one there. Okay. The aesthetics are essentially really the name of the variable. So X is the uh, the X variable is price, just to specify that, and the Y variable is sales. So then what we're going to do. So this just sort of sets up the object in memory, so to speak, in the R environment. Now what we're going to do is add points to it. So this is the scatter plot part in particular. Uh, just to make it a little bit easier to read, I'm going to uh, change the character settings to character plot character 18, size equals four, and color equals black. You know, you could try a few of those out. And then I'm just going to set a blank black and white theme and on the background. Okay, so I've created my plot P. So I just want to print it out now. So I'm just going to type P, and that's what I get there. Okay, you can make more enhancements to it, but just for the sake of simplicity, that's as far as I go. But you can make plenty of more enhancements to make it more legible and so on. But one thing we can do uh, is to actually, we want to judge the relationship here. So what I'm going to do is add in this extra line. And this adds in a smoother. So this is a sort of like a regression line, but it's not just a simple linear regression line it actually fits in a low s smoother okay a squiggly line if you want to. so this actually just actually just plots uh, a trend line through the data and it's not linear but you can sort of or not necessarily linear in fact if it is if the underlying relationship between the variables is uh, quadratic or curved it will actually demonstrate it and that's what we have here we seem to have a, a sort of curvilinear relationship there's a bit of a curvature there okay so that's our plot so we reckon there's a sort of there's a negative relationship between price and sales but it's not exactly linear uh but the, there, it seems to have some sort of quadratic curvature relationship or non-linear curvature relationship so exercise two we are asked to calculate the correlation coefficient so a research assistant suggests calculating the product moment correlation coefficient, the Pearson correlation coefficient, or between sales and prices. 
Carry out this calculation and test at the that should be at the one percent significance level the null hypothesis of zero collation, correlation against an appropriate one-sided alternative. So that's the correlation coefficient there, COR. By default, that's the Pearson correlation. Sales and price. We could actually mention yeah the uh, data it's from as well, but that's fine there. Minus zero point eight seven five five zero six two. Just actually sales and price actually are both in memory separately from the the data set but you could actually just mention if required data equals survey just to if that's just probably good practice i really should have it in there okay so that's the correlation coefficient what we're going to do is carry out the test okay now the appropriate alternative so what does the data suggests the data suggests that the true correlation coefficient is less than zero, so it's negative. Now, that is something that should accord with what you see in the alternative hypothesis, okay? So it's sort of what you see in the alternative hypothesis should match up with what you see in the sample data. Although the null hypothesis is the exact opposite of what the alternative hypothesis is, and we're just sort of testing it. Here, the Command is core.test, sales and price, and I really should have had this previously, data equals survey, confidence level equals 0 0.99, so that's the 1% significance level, confidence level equals 0 0.99, and then the alternative hypothesis is less, okay? So that's the correlation coefficient, the data, this is the two variables, the test statistic, degrees of freedom, n minus two, there's 10, 10 pairs of observations, and the p-value there and we can see that's very you know very significant 0 0.000451 okay and we test that against 0 0.05 if or 0 0.01 actually and anyway so we reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that the alternative hypothesis has definitely got a lot of merit to it uh, the 99% confidence interval is there, it's minus 1 to minus 0 0.44, and again, we notice that 0 is not in that range of values. And that's the sample estimate there. Okay, so we, yeah, that's good, so it's fairly clear that we have a negative relationship. So this is exercise 3. A, a statistician in the market research department suggests instead calculating the Spearman's correlation coefficient, okay, RS. So calculate RS for the data and test at the 1% level the null hypothesis of no association. That's actually important. Remember, previously the null hypothesis was in terms of zero correlation uh, previously, okay. Let's just go back there and check that and see what I mean. This is exercise two, zero correlation. Now it's association, okay? Important difference there. Between sales and prices against an appropriate two-sided alternative. Okay, so essentially, yeah, appropriate two-sided alternative. We don't really do much with that. So core.test, sales, price, uh, sales and price, the name of the variables, the data set we're drawing this from, data frame, data equals survey, Confidence level equals 0 0.99. And additionally, what we specify is method equals Spearman. Now, by the way, I can actually just use method equals Spearman just to actually get the correlation coefficient, the Spearman correlation coefficient only. Core, sales, price, data equals survey, method equals Spearman, just to get this value here. Now, it's called Spearman's row. That's the sort of informal term for it. Now, this is the test statistic there, 318, okay. But the p-value there is 0 0.0001302. So again, that is less than 1%. So in this case, we reject the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is, has strong evidence to back it up. Now that alternative hypothesis is that the true row is not equal to zero. And that means the null hypothesis is that it is equal to zero. Okay. Now, so why did we mention that? So comment on the tests used in exercises two and three with a, with a reason, stating with a reason what you prefer. Now this is an important thing actually, why we would use uh, Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. 
Uh, it's a non-parametric measure of rank correlation, which is statistical dependence on two variables. Now, this is important here. It assesses how well the, the relationship between two variables can be described with a monotonic function. Okay, so a monotonic function is less stringent, a less stringent example uh, compared to a linear relationship. So it's essentially if one is consistently increasing or decreasing as the other increases or decreases, that's a monotonic relationship. So they could have a consistent trend upwards or downwards as the other one increases, but as long as it's sort of, you know, consistent. Um, that actually would be a better description of a curved linear relationship. Okay, so monotonic variables increase or decrease in the same direction, but not always at the same rate. So it could allow uh, curved linear relationships. Okay, linear relationships increase or decrease in the same direction at the same rate. So they should appear linear. Now, a linear relationship can be monotonic, but an, a, does, a monotonic relationship doesn't mean it's linear. Okay, so. Um, so essentially the thing is that the Pearson correlation coefficient is for linear relationships, whereas the Spearman correlation coefficient is appropriate for any monotonic relationship, whether or not they are linear. Let's just scroll down there a second, just to sort of make sure that's on screen. Okay. It's a lot of text there. This is actually a, in a lot of textbooks. Like this is a sort of abstraction for what's on Wikipedia. And that's it, really. Let's go back up here just for the last part. I think I just need one more comment. If there's no repeated data values, a perfect Spearman correlation coefficient of plus one or minus one occurs when each of the variables is a perfect monotone fun function of the other. Okay. Right. We'll leave it there.